Good morning, y'all, and welcome back to what we call the channel now. There's been a lot going on since we got home. We uh, have a broken RV. We stumbled into ranching. And a lot of things have been happening on the channel and a lot of questions have been going on. So today, me and Alicia, by the way, she's going to be in the video. I'm in the video today. <laughs> so don't ask the question. Also, the kids will not be in the video, so don't ask that question either. But today, we're going to take several of the questions we've gotten over the past several weeks and we're going to answer them for you guys so you guys know what's going on because there is a lot going on and there's some things that we haven't shared with you and some things that we don't know the answer to yet but we're going to try our best to let you guys know what's going on with paving new paths question number one the one we get most often is what is going on with the channel well there's a lot going on with the channel a lot of y'all said let's watch this family travel around the united states in their rv and then you may have noticed lately, there's no RV stuff and it's just this guy talking to animals on a ranch. And the family is kind of gone from the videos. And there's a reason for that. So reason number one is you all know if you've been around that we had a little drama with Tom. And so we kind of made a decision to remove the kids and myself from the channel for just a little bit so that we could pull back on the harassment that we were receiving. Um, he contacted us privately through email and said some really crazy things so we pulled back a little and we kind of let Kevin take over the channel but don't worry we have some things in the works and we hope to get the family and myself back on the channel two-part answer the reason we stopped showing the kids so much when we were traveling when you guys saw a video the reason we were okay showing the kids is because by the time you saw the video we were no longer at those RV parks so we could show you all the things we were doing where we were staying and by the time the video aired, we're not there anymore. Well, now that we've sort of settled down, we are very aware that we are showing a lot of our lives. And if you really wanted to try, it wouldn't be very hard to find us or where we and our kids are being hanging out. Right, and we kind of have this thing that our home is kind of our sacred space. So like, we don't really feel that bringing cameras there every day or having the cameras out for the kids uh, while they're in their space is a good idea. I think you guys can appreciate that. And so with Kevin being gone nearly all day, and then when he gets home, he spends time with us and wants to play with the kids and you know, dinner and baths and all the things. By the time we get done with that, there's really no time to film at home. Um, and then we have to start the process of letting Kevin edit and get ready for bed and all those things. So there just hasn't been much time to film as a family. Question number two, the one we get a lot. Why don't you answer all the comments anymore? This is something that we said we were gonna try to do from day one, answer every single comment. Well, you know why we can't answer them anymore? So it kind of goes back to what I just spoke on, that with Kevin being gone all day, there's not two of us to sit and answer questions all day. So I do my best on the day that videos come out to just get ahead of them. I wake up before the kids, answer comments as best I can or in the evening when they're asleep. But really when they're awake, I want my attention to be on them. Now there are times where if we get a ton of comments, I'll spend like a day answering comments, but even spending a day or two or four or whatever, I'm not gonna get caught up at this point. So we do our best, but we just are a little strapped for time. Also, the frame flex videos really threw us for a loop. We had never gotten so many comments. Like usually within like a day or two, we can catch back up. We still haven't caught back up. And I don't know if we ever will because we can answer them and as fast as we answer them is as fast as they get replaced with new comments. So sorry if we haven't answered your comments. We're working on it. You might get a reply that says a month later, Kevin from Paving New Pass answered your comment. Well, that was me finally getting around to you. But thanks for the comment anyway. Right, and I am proud to say, I think, let me know if I'm wrong, we are finally caught up on emails. Uh, we had a ton of emails to get through um, from our two email accounts, and I think I finally got those cleared out. So we are going in the right direction, but I do not know that we'll ever get back to all those FrameFlex comments because they were just thousands of them. Has Grand Design reached out to you since your initial videos? Actually, Grand Design has not reached out to us at all. So our initial videos were after everything with Grand Design had already taken place. We didn't make a single video about the frame flex until we know the way that was going to go with Grand Design. So we weren't making these videos as a reaction to them. This was 
this is what happened between us and this is what's going on now so no grand design has not reached out to us since before we ever made the first video that bridge was burned long before we pressed the record button and then that always brings up the follow-up question is there any news on the rv like what's going on with your rv you guys are gonna hate this answer because i'm sounding very wishy-washy right now there is news on the RV, but the reason we're not talking about it is because we don't know the answers and talking about it is just speculation right now. We have some things in the works. You'll probably find out in the next couple videos because something is moving again on the RV, but we don't know the answer yet yet. So you'll have to stay tuned because when that video comes out, we'll try to explain more on what's going on with the RV. And we didn't want to just put out a ton of videos where we're just trying to like string you along. So rather than string you along with no answers or no real information to give you we've just decided to be quiet about it and when we have good information or new information to bring you that's when we'll share it so in case you're wondering the broken rv well it's still broken nothing new to report so the next question is people often ask are you be getting a new rv to travel full-time again the answer is probably absolutely never again will we buy a brand new rv and travel full-time and I hate to say that because we had a great time, but this whole experience has changed our whole outlook on what is possible with an RV. For lack of better words, it killed our momentum. Like literally and figuratively, <laughs> it killed our whoa, momentum. Is that a dad joke? <laughs> that was a mom joke. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> uh, anyway, so yeah, it kind of killed our momentum. We just we don't have the desire to get back into an rv right now uh to start traveling full time again yes we saw amazing things yes we had amazing experience and we are so thankful for those years but after going through what we've gone through with this rv it almost seems irresponsible to go back out on the road again and do this again um for financially, for our children's sake, for all of the things. Um, so yeah, I think those days are probably behind us. So this is a question we used to get all the time while we were on the road. It was, would you guys ever consider opening a mobile RV shop so that Kevin could repair RVs while we were on the road? The answer is absolutely not. I quit a job traveling the world fixing things so I could be with my family. I'm not about to go be with my family traveling the USA to fix things. Plus. My momentum kept me busy enough on my own. I don't have time to work on everybody else's momentum. And now it's brought up the question, well, now that you're stationary and you're in a home base, would you ever open an RV shop where people could come to you? The answer is still no. I do not want to work on RVs. Sorry, but it's a little hard to work on something you know is not built to, to do what you're probably doing with it anyway. Well, and yeah, and something that you know is gonna probably break again, and we didn't want that on our conscious that, okay, we fixed so-and-so's plumbing problems, and then he went 100 miles down the road, and because the plumbing parts are so cheaply made, it broke again, like, that doesn't seem fair to us. So yeah, Kevin's not getting into the RV maintenance business. Sorry, guys. And the follow-up question to that, they wanted to know if we're gonna open an RV park. The answer is also maybe. Actually, it's, the answer is no, <laughs> but it's a great business idea. Yes, and it is one we definitely considered for a while. Probably when we were about a year or two on the road, we started thinking, man, we could probably do this. I mean, because when you've stayed in so many parks, you start seeing the good parks versus the bad parks or what they could do to improve business. And you just, your mind starts thinking like, I could, I could definitely be in this business and do it better than most. Um, but I don't know that that's in our cards. The one thing that always held us back is we realize that if you open a business like that and you make it successful, me and Alicia can never not be there. So we will be tied and married to that business forever. You will never have any days off. And then that kind of takes away the joy of the RVing. Um, you're not able to get out and go and see things or go on vacation or even stay in a hotel room or whatever because you need to be at your business especially on long holidays and summers and weekends and things like that and we just didn't feel that that was kind of in our cards at least not right now it's not another question i keep getting is what happened to all the repairs that we were going to do to the rv when we got home well frankly because the frame is broken and we're not sure what's going on with the rv we don't know if it's a good investment of our time and money to make repairs to an RV, which may never see the road again. So that's why you guys haven't seen me do any of the major basement renovations and repairs that we need to do on the RV to hit the road again. It's because we don't know 
if we should spend the money on it. And a lot of you guys have bought our t-shirts of make frames great again and make RVs great again. And you started emailing and asking, hey, are you gonna put out new merch with the slogan on it? So we are happy to announce that we finally have mugs available, stickers, ladies V-neck shirts, and there may be some more things coming. So check our store often, go to pavingnewpaths.com and that's where you can get that merch. So Alicia, when they go to pavenewpaths.com, will we be updating the merch to have ranching and farming things in it? This is something we have thought about because the question comes through on comments and on email quite often and people want shirts with horses or donkeys or things like that on it. So you guys let us know, would you want some farming and ranching options as far as the Paving New Paths merch is? If you do want some of those options, let us know what you think would be a good merch idea. And if we use your idea, of course, we'll send you one for free. I guess we're going to look at new merch options. So that brings us to the next question. It is, is Paving New Paths YouTube channel just a ranching channel now? And the answer is right now, we kind of are just a ranching channel. Well, we're not really a ranching channel. Like most of you guys probably found us. We were RVing the United States with our family. So we're an RV channel. And then you may, any of y'all may have found us because of the frame flex. So many of y'all think that we're an RV problem channel. And right now for the moment, we are don't have enough money to fix our RV. So our job right now is ranching and she lets me film. So right now, until we make enough money to figure out how to fix our RV, we kind of are a ranch channel. Don't worry, we're working on fitting Alicia and the kids into more videos and ways to film more things than just ranching. But for the moment, ranching is what we're doing so ranching is what you're seeing so the whole ranching thing has really thrown off a lot of our viewers they don't understand how you can just jump into ranching with really no explanation like how do you know what you're doing this is a funny one to answer because you should be asking yourself how can i just jump into rving and you guys watch that because technically i only had three years of rving experience and y'all watched all those videos I have 22 years of ranching experience because that's what I did for the first 22 years of my life. If you're from Texas, most of y'all grow up ranching. So what I'm doing now as a job is things I got to do as a kid and no one paid me for it. So that's how we can go straight to ranching with no explanation at all because most of us, it's what we grew up doing. There is a reason that Kevin <laughs> is the rancher and I am not on the ranch because I did not grow up doing these things. The first time he told me he was going to ride the horse, I was like, you better not get hurt. Like, do not fall off this horse. And he's like, it's like riding a bike. It's going to be fine. And I'm like, you haven't been on a horse in 20 years. Are you sure? Like, I was really worried. So as soon as he got off that horse, I'm like, you better text me and tell me you're fine. So I still worry, but he assures me everything is fine. And he gets to drive tractors unsupervised now. Like, he's living his best life. The next question that gets asked all the time, because you guys obviously are seeing a bunch of me ranching by myself, is why doesn't Alicia film with the kids during the day while I'm ranching? And I'll let her answer that one. <laughs> because it would be utter chaos. I only have two hands. My children combined have six hands. They are very needy. They're in a very young state, so they need mama for pretty much everything at this point. So if I tried to turn on a camera and get some good footage for you guys, I assure you within 30 seconds, you would be like, where's Kevin? Like, get us back to Kevin. There has to be someone that's kind of dedicated to holding the camera, I think, when your kids are this small and kind of helping with the scenes, like as far as where you should be filming from, what angles and things like that. And I just can't do it with these children. They're too young. Maybe we'll get there at some point, but right now it's it's just too much. So you don't want to make a video of you and the kids and sh show them what it's really like. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a short for you guys. We haven't done, we've only ever done one short on our channel. I'll give you a short of a time lapse of one minute of my life. What is one minute time lapsed like? 10 minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll time lapse one minute for you just so you can see how crazy things are because it gets chaotic very quick. For the most popular question we get, it is Kevin, why do you use your personal truck at work instead of a ranch truck? This question gets asked 437 times with every video. And it's because the job requires, what are you laughing about? It is true. It That's is how many true. times. The job requires you to have a truck capable of towing gooseneck trailers to have the job. I was hired as the ranch foreman and part of the ranch foreman's job is I carry the animals. Yes, they do have 
two Super Duties they own, but guess what? They are their personal trucks. They don't always use them. I actually have used them a few times, but for the most part, if my truck is available, that's what I have to use. Also, I enjoy driving my own truck because I'm comfortable with it. Their trucks are slightly newer, which will make more sense in a, which she tells you because the button's moved. But I enjoy driving my own truck. I'm comfortable with my truck. It's part of the job. We get compensated for the truck. It should be a non-question because right now the truck's making money. Before, it was just costing us money to pull that RV. Then I have a very funny story to share that I don't think we've shared on the channel. So one of the first few days that Kevin got hired, we still had the fifth wheel in the back of the uh, truck. Is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we still had the fifth wheel in the back of the truck and they needed to get an animal to the clinic. So emergency situation. An emergency situation. So she, the vet said, take my truck, go get the trailer, do all the things to get the animal up there quickly. Kevin hops in her truck and without thinking, all the auto seat settings start going and the the uh, steering wheel is adjusting and all that. Well, she's about five foot two and Kevin's about six foot one. So you can imagine how that ended when he got crunched <laughs> up into the seat and the steering wheel and couldn't get out and the seat wouldn't stop moving and the buttons are all different. So he couldn't make it stops so i personally think that's why he uses his own truck because he doesn't want to relive that experience of being crunched like a tin can <laughs> that f450 sure was nice once i figured out how to get that seat back but when it started going i had one option take it or bail out so i opened the door and bailed out but i got stuck by the steering wheel in the seat <laughs> It's the funniest story to me because I can just imagine it and I wish a camera would have been rolling because that would have been amazing to watch. Sorry, babe. <laughs> so that's why I use my own truck because it doesn't try to eat me when I get in it. <laughs> Context. You guys see a lot of me and every time you see me, we get the questions, where's Alicia? Where's the kids? Well, then I'll include them in the next video and I'll get the follow-up question. Well, where's Phil? You guys have grown to love Phil and we love that. We love that you've accepted him in and it's just not possible right now for us to put him into every video. Although we have been working on him to get his own channel because we think it would be a huge hit. Yeah, Phil has strict guidelines in his contract. He can only work one day a week. <laughs> From a chair, of course. <laughs> so Alicia, people wanna know, where have you been living? And this is a question we've kind of avoided answering online uh, just because we wanted to keep our personal space ours and not really announce whether we were at the RV or at my parents or in a different location, but we're comfortable sharing that now. So we will tell you that ever since we came home back in December, we have not been in the RV. We have been, uh, oh. The reason we haven't been in the RV is because we actually thought it had to be vacated because it was about to get fixed. So we kind of sort of halfway moved out and got settled somewhere else before we made the decision to get it repaired. That's why we started not living in the RV. And so when it became evident that Grand Design told us it was gonna be a five month wait, um, it was gonna be a long drawn out process when we thought it was just gonna get fixed really quick and we'd be right back in it within like a month. Uh, when it became evident that we weren't going to be right back in it or it wasn't going to be fixed right away, we had the discussion of do we want to go back in and live in it because we were paying for the RV park, we might as well use it. And we went over there one day and it just was depressing. Like having an RV that you can't move and feeling stuck somewhere, like we didn't buy the RV to be stuck or to not be able to travel. So being there and seeing all the repairs that we still needed to make but couldn't make because we didn't know if that would be a waste of money considering what they would need to do by, for fixing the frame, we just decided that we didn't want to spend another night in it. So where have we been staying? <laughs> well, I wish I had Lolo and Phil here to tell y'all. Once again, they have welcomed us into their home for an indefinite period. Um, They've done this quite often. If you're new to the channel, we uh, stayed with them when we sold our house initially while we were getting the RV ready to travel before we ever went on our first trip. We stayed with them again whenever I had Caden because I had to have a C-section. So we were there for about three months. And then when we were getting ready to leave, Alicia said, I miss my mother. So I'm gonna go ahead and break my ankle. <laughs> yes, so after having Caden and re recovering, we went on a three week camping trip with my parents and Thomas and Beverly. And on the last night there of the three week trip, 
I broke my ankle and I broke it really good. So we moved back in with Phil and Lolo and I had to recover for three more months because I couldn't put weight on my leg. So when we left that time, I was like, Phil and Lolo, I promise, we're that's it. We're, we won't do this to you again. I mean, six months, you know, it's just the two of them. And then you bring in all five of us plus our dog. It's a lot. So we hey, promised it wouldn't. Guess what? <laughs> what? We're on month five this time. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's almost embarrassing to say, but they have a spacious house. They have an upstairs where we can kind of be out of the way. They welcome us every time, no questions asked. They don't say you need to be out by this date, although I bet they wish they did. And so they've made it a home for us so that we wouldn't have to be in the RV and feel like we were stuck somewhere. So we are super appreciative to them. And I promise mom and dad, after this time, there won't be another time. I promise. <laughs> There's gonna be another time, you watch. <laughs> and so with the where have you been living questions, there's always the where are you going to live? If you get rid of the RV or if you keep the RV, what are your plans? What are your living plans? Well, as of right now, we don't know what's going on with the RV. Well, we kind of do, but we know that it's not gonna be repaired anytime soon. So in the meantime, you guys have seen Rancher Kevin, well, on the ranch, I've showed it several times, there is a house on the back of the property. Well, that's actually a rent house for the employees. And since I'm an employee, I'm probably going to be renting it soon. Right now, it's being rented by one of, do y'all know him? It's one of y'all's friends. <laughs> it's one of the high school friends. Yes, it's a dive ball person that I, I grew up going to school with. So um, they're finishing up the build of their house. They've been there for about six months, and they'll be moving out soon. So we've kind of just been on hold waiting to see if we were going to move into this ranch house. We do know that whatever happens to the RV, it's not going to happen in a timely fashion. So we might as well find our own space and sort of settle down here in something we can call our home. And since I'll be working right there, it'll really shorten the commute to work. And I mean, we did consider the option of buying, of uh, renting a different house, things like that. And we just felt like with the market, the current way it is with all the high interest rates, maybe now's not the best time to buy. Plus, are we sure we're gonna be here for an extended period of time? We weren't sure of that whenever we, um, whenever we were making these plans. So we're just gonna probably move into the rent house and be right there on property. I think the kids will love it. And that's kind of where we think that we'll be able to start incorporating the kids and myself more into videos. You sort of just gave them a little hint. I did. You gave them a little hint. <laughs> I gave them so a nugget. So she mentioned settling down and buying a house and you guys probably going, oh my gosh, the RV, the RV. Well, let's go ahead and say it. Even if the RV gets fixed, we will never travel again in it full time. We may keep it and go on longer two and three month trips, but I think the full time traveling, it's, it's with, at least with that RV, is probably over with. So that brings us to the next question. Kevin, how long do you plan to ranch? If I had it my way, I'd ranch the rest of my life. But for right now, we're just ranching until we sort out the RV and our living arrangements here because honestly, it's a great job. It's it's your dream job. The only way I would ever stop ranching for her is if I could have a ranch for myself. Alicia, next question. <laughs> Big one. Are you homeschooling and will you continue to homeschool? All right, so Ashlyn just turned six, so she has been in kindergarten for this past year, and we have been homeschooling. So she's an excellent student. She doesn't need much direction. She She's a lot like Kevin. Like you tell her something one time, she learns it right away. So she's been excellent. Um, I'm kind of leaving this up to her because now that we're home and we're settled, sometimes she expresses desire to go to school and be with friends and things like that. And then other times she's like, I really like homeschooling, I wanna homeschool. So for the next school year, we aren't quite sure just yet. I'm gonna let her get through the summer and then we'll decide if we need to enroll her somewhere or if she wants to stay home with us. And Kayla just turned four, so she would just be a pre-K student anyway, but she feels she wants to go to a pre-K, then maybe we'll explore that option too. So that brings us to some questions for you guys. You guys have seen us do a whole bunch of RV things. You've seen us do family adventures. You've seen us fix problems. And now you've seen us ranch for a while. So the question is, what kind of videos would you guys like to see from Pave New Paths? Right now, I enjoy ranching, but I understand if you want to see more of the family and we're working on getting them involved. 
Right, and I told him, like, if you guys are interested, and I think it would be doable, like, if we do move into this rental house that's on the property of the ranch, would you want to see us, like, setting it up? And, you know, we literally have no furniture. Thanks to RV Mattress by Brooklyn Bedding, we have mattresses, but we don't have any furniture, per se. So, we've got to get furniture, we've got to get everything that a house requires that we don't have from our RV. So would you guys be interested in that content or is that something that you kind of just want us to skip over and not put on the channel? Let us know. So I guess what we're asking is what do you want to see more of and what would you like to see less of? Because we can probably make that happen. We are in the future a little bit so you might get to see some of the things you maybe don't want to see but eventually we'll catch up to you and be able to film the kind of content you guys want to see. I also want to know because it looks like people are enjoying the Tuesday videos. We still have a lot of backlog to get through because Kevin loves filming at the ranch, so we have a lot to a lot to show. Well, turns out as soon as she said I could film, I tried it a few days. I can do this. I filmed like 12 days in a row. At least she goes, what are we going to do with all this? I was like, man, do you see how much I was talking? I was blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yes, it turns out he likes talking to animals. <laughs> so, um, do you like the Tuesday videos? Is there a different day that you'd rather see it on? So currently we are publishing videos on Sunday and Thursday like we always have, but we've added in Tuesday. So we're wondering, should we keep the Tuesday videos up or should we drop those? Should we change them to a different day? You guys let us know because they seem to be a good hit and I kind of like a midweek video because a lot of the content creators I watch they don't put videos out like on a Monday or Tuesday so it gives you something new to watch we also are choosing Tuesday because as a creator that's what YouTube tells us is a good day to put it out but they actually don't ever talk to you guys they just go based on views and clicks and tell you hey people like to watch on this day people don't like to watch on that day so that's why we chose Tuesday but we want to know what do you guys what day do you want to watch Kevin talk to animals and other things coming soon. In closing, there are some things we would like to express to you because it's based on comments we get. People keep saying, what's up with the ranching? We came here to watch RV stuff. Get back on the road. We want to see RV travel videos. We actually had a conversation about six months before our RV broke that we might consider getting away from the RV subject videos. We still wanted to film videos about us as a family, but we kind of wanted to get away from the RV aspect of the videos. And hear me out, this is why. Have you ever noticed how every single week, if you go to YouTube and type in RV, it looks like the world is ending? Every RV channel has a problem or a negative title because the world's ending, because that's the way YouTube works. If you don't have a problem, no one watches your video. Well, that sort of gets old. And when you do it, because it's really, honestly, it's a game you're playing. When you do it, you attract a certain type of viewer. Not you guys, you guys are awesome. It's those viewers that come there for those negative titles and negative thumbnails because all they want to do is say I told you so and be negative back to you. And we've been talking that making videos in that manner attracts a certain kind of viewer. Again, not you guys, those new people. Well, it sort of starts to wear on you and you get tired of doing it. So we made the decision when we started doing the ranching videos, we're not playing the game. We're not going to do the negative video, the negative thumbnails, the negative titles, the shock and wow thing to get you to view. I'm just going to tell you exactly what I think the video is about and you either love it or you hate it. And a lot of y'all have made comments that your views are going down, you should stop ranching and get back to RVing. Our views are going down, but they're not going down because we're ranching. They're going down because we stopped playing the YouTube clickbait game. To touch on that just a little further, like when we would put out adventure videos or our family doing things videos, things not related to our RV or things breaking on the RV we would get X number of views. It was usually significantly lower than what we would get if we had a problem in our RV. The ranching videos are almost double what we would get off of an adventure video from RVing. So it makes us think that people do like to watch this, but we are, we are done playing the, the problem game. We're done playing the negative Nancy game because like Kevin said, whenever you're searching for a negative title, you're searching for the bad thing to happen. You're always looking for negativity you're going to attract negativity. And we're just kind of over that. Like we didn't get into RVing. We didn't get into this to be negative. And so we're spinning this and we are going to have a positive channel, not saying things won't go wrong, ranching or living our lives or any of that, because things do happen. It's life. But 
as far as playing the game anymore, we're done. That is also why we chose to make only four videos about the frame flex. We said, let's say what we need to say and get out of the way because YouTube will see that and those videos got amazing views because they were super negative and the context of the videos was negative. So it works, it's drama. It's like the tabloids at the checkout line in the supermarket. There's a reason they're there because people are interested and they will click. Well, that's the way YouTube works. So that's why we made four, we sell our piece and we got out of the way because we didn't want our channel to become just about RV problems. And now that we're ranching, we're starting to see that people really want us to go back to the subject they found us at. Well, we hope to get away from that. We wanna be a channel that's just a channel about paving new paths, Kevin, Alicia, and family, just doing Kevin, and Alicia, and family things. And having the name Paving New Paths means that we can literally film anything because our path can take us anywhere. We were very, very aware of that whenever we made our channel name. We didn't want it to be RV related or any of that because we wanted the channel to be able to travel with whatever part of life we were in. And so I think that's that's kind of where we are. We just want to find something where we don't have to create drama or not. I mean, I'm not saying we ever created drama, but you make over things more, right. more, oh, more of a big deal than they need to be. Yeah, over sensationalize them. Um, and once you do that, and if you don't believe us, just go look at your favorite RV channels, click on most viewed video or most popular, and I guarantee you those top ones are all problem related videos because that's just what the viewers wanted to consume and that's fine that's nothing against them but the kind of content that Kevin and I watch whenever we do have downtime and when we're watching YouTube it's not RV related but we don't necessarily see them playing that game we don't see them having to be negative having to show a problem always having drama things like that so we just think that maybe the RV space is lost in that right now and we don't want to be a part of it. That kind of feels like we're breaking up with I them. I know. <laughs> I didn't mean it as a breakup. I just mean we want to have smiles on our faces. And those, some of those videos we have done in the past, they don't really make you smile very much. If you're a content creator, everything we just said makes a whole lot of sense to you. If you're a viewer, some of this is going to sound like outer space to you. But just know, if you don't believe us, go click any any really any subject but mostly rv related content and just see what the videos are trending or the, the videos that youtube wants you to watch they'll never be the nice most amazing places in the world they'll be we did something in yellowstone but we got hit by a buffalo we did something here but this happened our truck fell off the road something like that is what's gonna be getting the views not most amazing vacation ever please watch we love you Okay, so that wraps up all of our questions or the ones that we thought we could get through in a decent amount of time to not make a long video. Um, there is one thing we are truly going to miss about our full-time RV life, and that is meeting you guys out on the road. I will say our last year on the road, we met so many of you guys. We got to go on adventures with you. You came to our campsite. We came to yours, and it was the best. Thanks again, Katie. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. <laughs> she knows who we're talking about. Um, yeah, so that was like a highlight of year three for us. And we are truly, truly going to miss that because there really is nothing better than being in a campground and being amongst people that are just like you and are just there to have a good time and see fun things and go on great adventures. But now that we're kind of in our home base here in East Texas, if you're ever passing through, we really encourage you to let us know drop us a line say hey do you have a minute to come and meet us or can we go to dinner or whatever because we are still very very genuinely interested in getting to mo getting to know more of you personally and getting to hang out with you anyway guys alicia says thanks for watching we love you and we'll see you in the next one thanks mom You're dark there. You're dark? Yeah, face that way. Well, now you're going to be dark. Stop hitting me. Mosquito. Did y'all see she hit me? <laughs> there was a mosquito. Texas mosquitoes are no joke. <laughs> All right, so. Turn this way. No, no, no. Yeah, you're brighter that way. There. You see that? She was directing me. <laughs> so. This is why he likes filming at the ranch without me, because he's his own director. <laughs> Number seven has never told me to turn the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven might plow your camera over. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? She said Ashton was just like me. <laughs> <laughs> That's your one and only compliment. She's a lot like me too, just, just to put that out there. <laughs>